Hello, fellow followers. Welcome back to Fan Scene. Greg here. And today, after you, is physical media becoming too expensive? I have some thoughts on that. Okay, so there was this article I saw floating around on my feed as a physical media collector from joblow.com asking this very question, which I'm going to bring up here in a minute. Uh, but I do have some thoughts on this uh, because uh, this ar article I'm about to show is very interesting. I'm actually not going to read through the article because I've actually already read through the article, but I'm going to bring it up to you guys uh, so I can hit my bulletin points of my thoughts on it. And I'll show you, you know, I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Uh, but I, this article I'm going to bring up here, I find very interesting because it feels sort of like, sort of in a small way, like a hit piece on physical media and also a uh, praising of physical media. It's really weird because there's some stuff I highly disagree with it and some stuff I agreed with in it. And I'm going to go ahead and bring it up here real quick. Here we have it from joblo.com. Is physical media getting too expensive? The article's by Tyler Nichols. I will put a link in the description down below if you guys want to go read the whole read the whole article. Uh, and we'll get to this that they got here about the Crow still book and uh, the Drive still book and stuff. But it basically starts off like every one of these articles start off mentioning uh, Best Buy getting rid of physical media, mentioning Target diminishing their physical media. And it also says that buying Blu-rays online is almost impossible as well. <laughs> right off the bat, right up here, uh, right, right, right in the beginning of this. And I just, I got to laugh at that because everybody always brings up Best Buy and Target. Uh, Best Buy had some really great still books. They did. They had some great movies. They did. But they weren't the, the number one place to buy physical media. Target never really was that great in the first place as for physical media collectors. And what are they smoking when they say it's hard to buy online? They do bring it up Amazon. They do bring up Amazon, which uh, Amazon is still a huge place to buy Blu-rays and DVDs and 4Ks. But I just recently did a video here on my channel about Dia Diabolique DVD. It's an online uh, store that sells Blu-rays and DVDs. Uh, there's a store you can go to orbitdvd.com. That's the website, orbitdvd.com. Great selection of Blu-rays. There's Amazon. There's so many other stores on discount. Uh, oh, I can't remember. It's discount something uh, where you can find massive amounts of Blu-rays. Blu-rays, what we're witnessing basically is uh, no more physical media in brick and mortar stores. But however, they do mention Walmart, which I brought up because Walmart is expanding the physical media uh, sales for the most part at the moment. Uh, they haven't done a real well of stocking them and keeping them well preserved, which I do agree with. I do believe they mentioned that uh, in here about uh, how Walmart doesn't really take care of their physical uh, media departments and, and they're very uh, overprotective with uh, their stuff so it gets stolen so it is it can be a detriment with like stickers and stuff they put on the blurs which i do agree with that but there and as we just covered here on sds sd uh, on the channel i mean sds studio distribution services is working to put more physical media back in stores with fred myers and gamestop and i know a lot of people don't like gamestop and i understand that completely so that's okay that's okay if you don't want to shop get uh gamestop but fred myers is going to have a wall dedicated uh, that's uh, owned by Kroger, which I assume maybe it would come to Kroger. And who knows what else the SDS got planned. So there are people actively working to put physical media back in stores. Now, where it gets to some of the stuff about um, the prices increase, it does mention here, uh, physical, it says, yeah, making a switch to physical media, because they do talk about streaming and how streaming is uh, has these prices increases and everything. Yes, physical media, you know, streaming does have prices increase. They literally started out at like $7.99 and $4.99 in some cases, and now they're up to almost $25, $26 if you don't want commercials. And in some cases, even if you're paying those $25, $26 for streaming, you're still getting commercials. So uh, streaming is has turned on has turned off some people but streaming is for the masses and that's where the masses have gone uh but it, and it says yet making a switch to physical media is damn near impossible for some people let's just look at the 4k ultra blue hd blu-ray players which run the cheapest at a whopping 200 dollars. 200 dollars for a 4k player let me take you a trip back to 1988 this is 1988 as you can see here this is advertisements for a vcr a camcorder and stuff like look at those prices that's 1988 for a vcr and a camcorder right so 200 dollars is too expensive for a 4k player and don't get me wrong don't get me wrong i know in this day and age that, that some of the stuff this article fails to take into account for is inflation 
inflation. And they do bring up, the, like I said, they do bring up the fact that physical media has become a niche market, it, which it is. It's become a collectible niche market, which I don't think a lot of people understand when they say, well, the so-and-so has got streaming and uh, they don't even buy Blu-rays anymore. We're, it's dying. It's like, those are the masses. Are you a physical media collector? Are you buying physical media? Okay. That's who you that's who buying physical media because we've seen here, as I've I've covered on my channel, the sales of physical media have fallen, but they began to level out. What that means is the masses, for the most part, the general masses have gone on to streaming and other things have moved away from this. And the physical media collectors are the ones that are buying physical media, and it's leveled out to where it's still a multi-billion, billion dollar industry, and people are still buying physical media. All right. And also uh, it talks about how, uh, it, you know, where it talks about 4Ks in today's day and age are, uh, you know, 30 bucks because they, they remember how they can finally remember when uh, the base price was 1999. Yes. At one point in time, uh, DVDs, Blu-rays, well, DVDs and then Blu-rays were 20 bucks. But let's also let me take you back to 1989. Look at this. This is an advertisement for a Nightmare on Elm Street Part 5, which came out in 1989, right? And if you look down here at the corner, look how much money. It was going for almost $65 for a VHS tape, brand new, in 1989. See, what, what people also fail to realize here is, into the 90s and into the early 2000s is when uh, the physical media, the VHS boom, and then eventually DVD and all that was at the all-time high because there was no streaming, right? There was no streaming. There was no alternative. You would actually have to go to the theater to see a movie. You'd have to actually wait six months, and then you'd wait for that tape to come out. And uh, by the time it got turning on all cylinders in the 90s and the early 2000s, Things were pretty cheap. The economy was actually not as bad as it is today, right? So things were cheaper. People were buying physical media because everybody, the general masses in general, wanted to have some of their favorites, right? And then we had the laser disc, which was more of the, you know, the niche physical media people, you know, with the laser disc before DVD came along. And then we had DVDs and Blu-rays. And then streaming effectively came in and kind of Throw a wrench and everything, and it, streaming sucks, right? But if you if you do streaming, that's fine. And if you if you do streaming and physical media, that's fine, right? Okay. So, uh, and, and I will agree because it does it does bring up boutique labels in here, uh, and uh, you know stuff like that. And I will agree that Shout Factory, which I I can't I can't stress enough, does get a little bit ridiculous with their prices and the double triple dipping. Um, there's absolutely no reason reason whatsoever that the movie Dracula 2000 should be $30 on Blu-ray. That movie literally should be like 10 to $15 on Blu-ray. There's no reason whatsoever that should be a $30 Blu-ray. Scout Shit Factory, Scout, whatever you want to call it, has really damaged their brand lately. Uh, I, I have become less and less a fan of their tactics and how they do it. And I, I agree with uh, the sentiment and some of that. And, and, and it does bring up, uh, you know, the bargain ban at Walmart, which is basically DVDs now. And also I want to get this, to, to, you know, uh, I know some people snub their noses at DVDs anymore. The general masses that do buy physical media that also stream more than anything, but do with, hey, I want to get this. They prefer a DVD. A DVD is fine to them. They will buy that $5 DVD and enjoy it. It's, okay. Physical media is a collector's market. Right. So that's why we're getting uh, these boutique labels, creating these 4Ks, Blu-rays at limited runs and everything. And it can feel like prices are ridiculous. And I understand people don't want to pay 35 to uh, maybe $40 for a 4K. And I know that can seem a little outrageous. I get it. I get it. But think you got to also remember there was a time, like I mentioned, when a VHS tape cost $65. And that's brand new for everybody, brand new for everybody. And then through the years, once the economy sort of stabilized and people started buying that, you know, these, like I mentioned earlier, VCRs, videos, and DVDs, all that were lower price. But we're in an era now where the economy isn't so great. Inflation is at a lot of time, like I mentioned. There are multiple boutique label companies uh, and other companies that are just, you know, trying to make physical media disc for us and sometimes a little run. So they cost a little more and everything like that. And then, uh, and like with the big studios, they want streaming, so they don't care about physical media. So they, they they're just, but they are still making it because it does still make them billions of dollars. So they're kind of reluctantly making that. And this, this does bring up the, um, drive 4k Steelbook, which is 
$35, like I mentioned. Uh, I haven't really checked, but typically after they release these still books from Sony, they'll eventually release a single version outside of the still book uh, for a lot less money on 4K. And it does bring up the Crow still book, uh, you know, and this is where I want to talk about a little bit about this Crow still book. All right. The Crow still book was made for collectors, a limited run. For collectors, first come, first serve. I have absolutely no problem with that. That's why it's made. You don't want somebody to make a collectible item and say, this is a collectible item. We're going to make this much. And then once it's sold out, we're going to remake that collectible item. That's like what they did with the comic book industry. When the comic books were, you know, selling really, really big older comics were selling. And then like they started making multiple limited edition comics uh, of the same comic. And they over flooded the market. And those comics aren't worth jack. So I have no problem with them making a limited run Crow still book or other still books and they sell out. The problem I have, which they do bring up in this article uh, about eBay, flooded eBay, is, um, as it says here, is that scalpers. I have a problem with the scalpers because these scalpers will buy up. This is the problem here where I, I think it does get a bit expensive is because these scalpers will buy up these collectible items. And then they will flood eBay with them or other place, auction places or places like eBay and charge like hundreds and hundreds of dollars for this when that is ridiculous. And there is some, the studios or somebody, they need to try to fix that. That that needs to be taken care of. That's where I do agree where this is causing some of the problems with uh, expensiveness. And for somebody looking to get into physical media collecting, which this also brings up about, you know, look, it's getting harder to get into physical. No, it's not. It's now it's more time than easier than ever because we're getting more physical media releases now than ever. And people, you don't have to just buy online and everything. If you want to just start a physical, I always say go to thrift stores, secondhand stores, and start buying DVDs, maybe Blu-rays. They're super, super cheap right now. You can get like five for a dollar, you know, because people have get the masses have given up their collections and it's super easy to find them. And then maybe once you get into that and you, you want to move up, you want to upgrade to Blu-ray, you want to upgrade to 4K, then you can start going through the like the deals and everything. That's that's how I see it. I think it's super easy to get into physical media. And I think it's much more, much, you know, you pay one-time payment, you have something you love forever and, and you can watch it whenever. However, without it being, un, without it being edited, it, taken away from you or stripped from you. Uh, do I think some prices do get a little out of hand? Yes, I do. I do think, you know, some, in some cases, uh, you know, 4K disc and everything can get a little out of hand. But I'm also, as a physical media collector, as somebody who's been collecting physical media for years and years and years since I was a kid, I know that the physical media at one point in time for a VHS was 65 and in some cases, $80. So if I see something that I really, really like, which they also bring up in this article uh, about um, the Giver getting a 4K, and they, they say uh, the Giver, I, this, this person says they have the Giver coming to them on 4K, and they're willing to pay that money for that 4K because it's something they never thought would ever have, but in some cases, uh, they won't. Right. Okay. So yeah, I can see that. I can see, you know, I've, I've, I do that myself. If I, I see something that I really, really want and it's on a 4k or something and it, maybe it's a little more. Uh, and if I have the money, I'll buy it. I don't care. You know, that's what I do. It, or if I see something I really, really want, and maybe I do think it is a little expensive. I'll wait for a sale because a lot of these boutique stores and stuff have sales, a lot of sales. Kino is a great one for sales. They sell a lot. Um, you know, uh, Vinegar Syndrome does really great sales here and there. Uh, a lot of these companies have really great sales. So, like I said, it fills this article here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take it down now. So if you guys want to read the whole article, like I said, I'll put it in the description down below. But I just wanted to give you guys my thoughts, my, you know, after reading this because I feel really feel like this was really a weird article because it's like saying that you should speak with your wallet and stop buying these physical media discs. That's how you speak with your wallet. And I've always been, you speak with your wallet and you buy what you want. Uh, you know, you don't need a still book. Also, they brought up the Crow still book for 30 something dollars and it's 50 something. You want that Crow 4K? It's $25 right now. $25. It's the exact same disc that's in that still book. It's the exact same special features that's been put on pretty much Every single release of the Crow that uh, from the DVD to the 4K, uh, you can get it for 25 bucks in, in a, just a standard case. You know, if you're if you're not a collector, if you just want the Crow on 4K, it's only $25, not $35, not $30. That's not bad. And then the, the, the Blu-ray, if you just want the Blu-ray, Blu-ray is only like $9.99. 
So <laughs> you have options, you know, uh, there's, uh, there's multiple options out there. And it's just, it felt weird to me that I'm trying to say that you can't buy, uh, physical media in stores or online anymore. Uh, I'll buy the Giver, which is coming out on 4k, but I won't buy uh, the drive still book. Matter of fact, the Giver is more expensive than the drive 4k still book on 4k. Matter of fact, it's, it's like 40 bucks. So he's willing to buy a $40 version of the Giver, but he won't buy the drive for, for on 4k for $35. I felt that was kind of weird. Plus you can buy drive on Blu-ray for cheap. Like I said, not everybody's going to want 4k. I like 4k. I collect 4k. I collect Blu-rays. I collect DVDs. I collect VHSs. You know, I will go to a thrift store. I will go to secondhand stores. I will go to pawn shops and I will also buy new and online. That's what I do. I'm a collector. I find those deals. If you find those deals, physical media is not expensive. And if you don't want to pay for something, don't pay for it. It's that simple, you know? Uh, but I think physical media is very accessible. I think it's better in the long run than streaming because who knows how much longer streaming will actually hold up. I don't think it's going anywhere, you know, but I do think a lot of these streaming services are going to start consolidating and it's basically become cable. And eventually in the end, people are going to kind of get fed up with some of it. And as you can see, I do think uh, some people have started turning back to physical media here and there. You know, it's got that vinyl. People talk about the vinyl resurgence. It's because people, you know, they want that. They want that feeling again. Uh, but no, no, streaming is not going to go anywhere. That's for the masses. Uh, but as a physical media collector, I thought this article was a little funny. A little felt like a little bit like a hit piece. A little bit like uh, I agree with it. Um, yes, like I said, in some cases physical media can be a bit expensive. But also at the same time, if you've gone, if you've been collecting physical media for ages you know that it's been more expensive in some cases. And also, like I said, they left out factors of where the world is at today and where the world was back then. Uh, but what are your guys' thoughts on this? Do you guys think physical media is becoming too expensive? If you do, that's okay. You're okay to have a different opinion than me. Then and, and, you know, let's discuss in the comments uh, amongst yourselves, or if I respond to you, we'll discuss. Uh, but let me know what you guys think about all this in the comment section down below. And if you liked what you saw here, maybe consider hitting that like button or subscribing and hitting that bell for notifications. That'd be awesome if I earn your guys a subscription or possibly share the video out for everybody to see or join and become a channel member because that would help my channel immensely. Also, maybe consider hitting up my tea public and buying you some fancy merchandise. As you can see here, this is director Justin Seaman who directed uh, The Barn Part 1 and 2 at a, a convention here. Wearing my B movies, B movies and Booby shirt that I designed while meeting director Fred Decker, who did Monster Squad and uh, Night of the Creeps, and also meeting Jill Whitlow and Stephen Marshall from Night of the Creeps as well, too. Uh, I thought that was absolutely amazing. So if you want to get you guys some fancy merch, please do that. And thank you. A shout out to all my channel members. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Thank you guys for being channel members here and for all of your support. And to everybody watching, whether you like me, hated me, or like this video, or hated this video. I uh, thank you for sticking this long wherever you all are. Please have a great, safe, happy, healthy day, morning, afternoon, evening, and night. Always support physical media. It truly is the superior format. Godspeed.